In his 1994 biography, Long Walk to Freedom, Nelson Mandela described a leader leading from behind as a shepherd. The shepherd stays behind the flock, letting the weakest go ahead. As the others follow, all of them are unaware that they have been directed from behind. While it may seem like the shepherd is relinquishing his leadership responsibilities, he has not. At times, he uses his staff to nudge the flock as well as notifies them of danger, promptly veering them away. My name is Jennifer Mitchell Early. I help individuals and teams achieve organizational and personal success. And this is Leadership Matters. Today, we're talking about leading from behind as a leadership style. Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, Nelson Mandela was best known for his efforts to end apartheid, a racial system that separated groups of individuals by race and deprived people of color from full citizenship. Mandela was committed to nonviolent resistance. Having drawn influence by Mohandas Gandhi, Mandela spent 27 years in prison during which time his reputation grew. Upon his release, Mandela immersed himself into bringing peace to South Africa's black majority. Nelson Mandela is considered one of the world's most influential and transformative leaders. He's an icon whose leadership style has been analyzed, revered, and for which leaders have aspired for years. As a leader, I've always followed the principles I first saw demonstrated by the regent at the Great Palace. I have always endeavored to listen to what each and every person in a discussion had to say before venturing my own opinion. Oftentimes, my own opinion will simply represent a consensus of what I heard in the discussion. I always remember the regent's axiom, a leader, he said, is like a shepherd. He stays behind the flock, letting the most nimble go out ahead, whereupon the others follow, not realizing that all along they're being directed from behind. Exerted from Mandela's memoir, Long Walk to Freedom, Chapter 3. In the article, Mandela saw the wisdom in leading from behind. Part of his legacy is knowing the difference between assertiveness and leadership by Ilan Makari, senior writer at Inc. Makari notes that Harvard Business School professor Linda Hill has spoken and written about his concept of leading from behind for years. In her view, leading from behind is an essential skill for great leaders, enumerating two components to leading from behind. One, viewing leadership as a collective activity. An ideal leader knows how to cultivate a setting in which others can step up and lead. Hill tells Harvard Business Review, this image of the shepherd behind his flock is an acknowledgement that leadership is a collective activity in which different people at different times, depending on their strengths or nimbleness, come forward to move the group in the direction it needs to go. The metaphor also hints at the agility of a group that doesn't have to wait for and then respond to a command from the front. That kind of agility is more likely to be developed by a group when a leader conceives of his or her role as creating the opportunity for collective leadership as opposed to merely setting direction. And two, not confusing displays of assertiveness with leadership. If you do, you might overlook some great potential leaders in your organization. Just because they happen to be less vocal or showy in the way that they get things done, because they don't exhibit the take charge, direction setting behavior we often think of as inherent in leadership, they are overlooked when organizations select the people it believes have leadership potential. As an example, she cites Teron Swan, who worked for Nickelodeon Latin America. When Swan's team made presentations to upper management, Swan calmly sat on the side and let team members do the talking. She'd occasionally speak up to support or clarify a point. One of Swan's supervisors warned her about her inclusive approach. 
He told her, you're making a career mistake. You're not going to get ahead if you do this. It would be better if you came by yourself and made the presentations. In the supervisor's view, Swan's behavior wasn't leader-like, but her results were. Amidst highly unstable market conditions, her team managed to build Nickelodeon's presence in Latin America and to meet its overall budget. In short, there are times when great leaders, uh, leadership means letting go of whether others, including your supervisors, perceive your actions as leadership worthy. Certainly, this is one trait to remember about Mandela and to keep in mind when considering leadership development in your own organization or your own personal professional development. All too often, little things, taking the lead in a presentation, appearing to know more than you do, are still seen as markers of leadership potential, Hill concludes, when in fact, they may represent traits that are the opposite of what we need in a leader today. Thus, the phrase leading from behind is the idea that leaders don't guide a group of people, a team, a company, etc., from the front in the traditional top-down management hierarchy. Instead, they lead from the rear, like a shepherd tending to a flock. To many folks, this concept may seem unique as if it came out of nowhere. Leading from behind experienced a major cultural bump in 2011 when New Yorker's Ryan Lizza wrote that an Obama administration official had described the president's foreign policy as leading from behind. The truth, however, is that the notion of leading from behind is not new. In an article on best practice digital transformation, Ian Fisher, a senior figure at corporate advisory firm ISG, sounded a note of caution over what he considers to be the wrong type of leader for large scale change projects. He said leaders who use certain leadership styles to manipulate, create their own platform, or seek to only focus on the big picture for political reasons, typically lose their people and cause rework and burnout. As such, he said, transformations are best driven by people who prefer to lead from behind. They sit underneath their high performing teams, he said, leading by example so that the whole team wins. These sorts of leaders, he added, know that it's lonely at the front, so they go as a team. Which characteristics best equip a leader to lead from behind? The Institute of Leadership and Management's chief executive, John Mark Williams says, leading from behind has been described variously as leadership by influence, leading beyond authority, or simply not being authoritarian. Author and business consultant, Ken Blanchard once said, the successful leadership stems from influence, not authority. And an important point to bear in mind here is that the relationships, networks, and communication channels that people have are what make them effective leaders, in addition to their internal characteristics. Though the words leading from behind may not be spoken explicitly at companies, one can see its influence in modern tech companies. For example, Google is well known for its management style in which employees across various teams are encouraged to express ideas, thereby fostering a quick and nimble type of innovation pipe pipeline. Leading from behind simply means that one does not always need either the title or mantle of leadership to influence others profoundly. Sometimes it's simply expressed through the support of and cooperation with whomever, however temporary, carries the title of leader. Other times, it means offering criticism, but with compassion. In all its applications, it teaches the power of inclusivity and mutually held expectations, allowing each to bring his or her best to bear for the benefit of all. If you found this information valuable, hit the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.